Hey guys, Josh with the Update Channel. Today what we're going to be talking about is why do some diesel engines get addicted to ether? You now it might be the economy, inflation, the job market, or just bad luck, folks. Maybe they're at a party and another diesel engine says, hey, have you tried this ether? They try it. Their life's just never the same, folks. All joking aside, what the heck are we talking about here? Well, in the U.S. at least, we usually call it ether, but what is it? It's starting fluid, starter fluid. Cosby sauce, Cosby in a can, diethyl ether, petroleum ether. But really what we're talking about here, folks, is starting fluid. Now, starting fluid is a volatile mixture of components that doesn't necessarily even have ether in it. There's even a product I hear about in the Southern Hemisphere called this. But what is it used for? Well, basically, it's a very low temperature self-igniting gas it's stored as a liquid and with a propellant will turn into a gas you will spray it into the intake and generally for cold start or hard starting engines not just diesels but diesel in general it will help them start because it is so volatile it combusts easily so if you spray it into your intake and it's 20 degrees outside and your engine doesn't like to start it will help it start by self-igniting. Now, ether by itself is very good at its job, and that's why people use it. In fact, some machines and some trucks come with ether canisters already added onto them to help with very cold or even in very high elevation conditions where it can help an engine get started. So why would an engine get addicted to it? Now, addicted to it, it's not a chemical dependence like, of course, people or animals have, but... What we're talking about here is some engines won't start without it. And there's a variety of reasons why they won't, which is what we're going to discuss in length. But to answer it shortly, the reason they seem to get addicted to it is because the ether is not fixing the condition. It's literally just masking it over while starting or trying to start the engine. And by masking the problem, you're not fixing the underlying problem. And that's why it might seem that Maybe your engine or an engine that you know about won't start without ether because it's not fixing the problem. In fact, starting fluid or ether is, can or should say, can be damaging to the engine if used improperly or in too much quantities. So if you are spraying half a can into the intake and then starting the engine, you could actually be damaging the piston, the cylinder walls, the piston rings, maybe a variety of other items. It's very flammable, very volatile. Now, before we discuss the subject anymore, how about a little destruction of the week? This week's Destruction of the Week comes from James, and James sends us these pictures of a V12 Marine application, and the riddle is, how do you have a connecting rod with a wrist pin when the head's been removed and the liner and piston are off? How would you get the wrist pin out? Well, this is how, when the piston literally breaks off of the wrist pin, and it has welded itself to the liner. You can see the head gasket also got pulled here. He actually had to drill through the piston and then use an H-bar puller to pull it off. Pretty interesting setup, uh, definitely not something that I've seen before in a marine application. Also, liner looks like it got destroyed. Pretty cool pictures. Thank you to James. Let's get back to the topic at hand. Now, the dangers with it also are not just that it could damage stuff. It's also not supposed to be used on certain types of engines. Engines, particularly with intake grid heaters or glow plugs in general, you don't want to use ether because they could actually ignite, especially the ones with the intake grid heaters, inside the intake, not in the combustion chamber, which, of course, could be a real problem. So let's bring up some specific problems that could be causing your engine not to start easily, and you have to use ether to start it. Worn engine, and it's particularly a diesel engine that has low compression because leaking valve seats, you could have damage piston rings, damage to the cylinder wall, damage to the piston themselves. Low compression engines don't like to start, especially diesel ones, so you may have to use ether to get it started. Once it's started though, generally they'll produce enough heat to keep running without any problems. So you might be thinking, man, I don't know why it's addicted to ether. It's not really, it's just the engine's worn by itself. Another problem could be your fuel system. Your fuel system could be underperforming, maybe in a variety of ways. The timing of the fuel system is off, the injectors are worn, the high pressure pump, the Huey pump, a variety of fuel components could be underperforming, not enabling them to produce enough pressure to self-start the engine without this starter aid. Now, is the ether spraying it into the intake fixing either of these conditions? No, it's not. In fact, generally conditions will worsen over time, particularly 
The cylinder problem, if you're using lots of ether and your engine already was a low compression engine, you could be increasing the amount of damage in the cylinders. And in that case, yes, it's going to get worse and worse where you have to probably use more and more ether over time until you rebuild or replace the engine. Now, that's not to say that all the reasons a diesel engine won't start could be big, expensive repairs. There's lots of reasons why a diesel engine wouldn't start. Maybe it has weak batteries, bad battery cables, a weak starter. It could have a temperature or pressure sensor that's misreading. There's a variety of reasons why diesel engines can be hard starting. Diesel engines in general also do not like starting in the cold just because there's, well, there's a variety of reasons why that. I've actually made a separate whole video explaining why diesel engines don't like starting in the cold and a variety of ways without using spray and ether that you can help them start in the cold if you are not wanting to use a starting aid like ether. So what if you do have an engine that is addicted to ether and you want to get the problem fixed? Well, of course, like I already said, there's a variety of things that could be causing that condition and you have to find out what the source of the problem is. Maybe it's something simple. Maybe it's something very complicated and expensive. Is it dangerous to use ether though? Well, if used properly, not necessarily. It's not necessarily good for the engine. However, used in very small quantities at specific time, just with startup, probably aren't gonna do major damage very early on in the engine. Of course, with continued use in excessive amounts, yes, it can damage the engine. Now, of course, not everyone even uses ether. People use brake clean, they use penetrating oils, probably someone's tried DEF even, which I'm gonna go ahead and tell you that's definitely not gonna help the engine start putting that in the intake. But, but like I said, it's not the ether or the starting fluid in itself that is the problem necessarily. It is just the nature of the engine and in a lot of reasons why your engine might not be starting. Thought it would be an interesting topic to discuss. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.